I had a dog named Claire. Uh, my poor dog, I had her from uh, 98 until 2015 when she passed away of old age. And it broke my heart, what can I say? But uh, you know, when I had the dog, sometimes some people would say, oh, are you Claire's daddy? And I'd be like, no, I am not this dog's daddy. I am its owner. It is a dog. I am a human being. No, I, I, I did not uh, 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 father this dog. Much as I love her. I mean, I love my fucking dog, yeah? She was a great dog. I loved her, mm -hmm. but she was a dog. She was a pet, you know? I'd go to the park with her. I'd throw the ball with her. I, we'd rock around and stuff. We had a great time together. Sometimes we'd like hang out and cuddle up and watch TV together, but she was the dog, okay? I love my dog, but she was the dog, not my child. But see, a lot of women make this confusion. A lot of women, yeah, they, they are the mommy of their dog. Now, what the hell you think is happening, huh? I'll, I'll give you three guesses, but you're only gonna need one. Yeah, the dog is a child substitute, of course, but not always. That's the interesting thing. It's not always that the dog is a child substitute. See, you run into some woman who's got like a, like a little chihuahua or one of those little rat-like dogs. I, I don't know the names of them. I don't care to know the names of them because I'm never going to own such a dog, you know. If I wanted to own a rat as a pet, I'd get a rat, not a yapping rat, which is even more annoying, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, the women who own such dogs, huh? those are child substitutes. I mean, notice, they, they spend all kinds of money on the dog, you know, with the little outfits and crap, just as, the, as if the, child, uh, the dog, the chihuahua, were a child, yeah. And, and they put it in, in like little, uh, little purses and such, and, and uh, what do they call them? There's a great saying, uh, they, they're called purse puppies, yeah. They're child substitutes, and that's pretty obvious. And it's usually extremely selfish women who are just going around riding their cock carousel and having a great old time, right? Before they hit the wall, inevitably, of course. But anyway, they're riding the cock carousel. They don't have time for a kid, you know? I mean, they've got the time for the abortion, but not the kid, right? But so they get the chihuahua to assuage these maternal instincts that they have, and they walk around in their high heels and all made up, with their hair all perfect, and, you know, with a little purse with a little dog in it, yeah? That's a child substitute. But what about the women with those really big dogs? Oh uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Notice, women who own dogs, they don't own like the in-between dogs. No, 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 they own either like little chihuahuas and little rat-like dogs, or they own those really big dogs. Why do you think that is, huh? What do you think is going on there, huh? Huh? It's a weird sex thing. That's, that's it, that's what's going on, okay? She's got this weird, a relationship that borders on the sexual and perhaps sometimes crosses over into the sexual with the animal. It happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, I personally didn't believe this until the advent of the internet. I mean, the internet, boy oh boy, does it teach you stuff. When I first heard this notion that there were a lot of women who would go into sexual play with their pets, with their dogs. I heard this back in the 90s. I thought, this is a lie. They're just pulling my chain, you know? No way are women like a performing fellatio on a dog for crying out loud. No way are they letting a dog, you know, uh, give them cunnilingus. No possible way. This is not possible. And of course, you know, the internet, the internet arrived. And, you know, with its arrival, we discovered all kinds of perversions. And what I just described was the least of it, huh? A lot of women, I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them, certainly a majority of them, who own big dogs, they use the big dog as a man substitute. Yeah. Yeah, the bigger the better. Because, see, women instinctively like that sense that a man is bigger than them and overpowers them. And, you know, a big dog, uh, a big old St. Bernard or whatever, huh? Uh, those dogs can easily tip the scales at uh, 170, 180, 200. No, pre no problem at all, you know? Those dogs are big. Have I mean, you ever seen one? They're huge. So anyway, um, you know, the, the, these women, they get these big dogs, and they might not even realize it. 
but they want that big dog because they want to be physically overwhelmed. But at the same time, they're able to control the dog because it's a dog, okay? And dogs are very easy to condition to obey you and do exactly what you want it to do uh, from a young age. I mean, if you're consistent in your teaching the dog, right? The dog will do exactly what you want, just one, one command word and you're set, okay? And so that's what women do. Women. Uh, they get these dogs as little puppies and condition them. And so they can control the dog, but at the same time feel of being overwhelmed. I mean, it's really perverse if you think about it. I mean, come on, yeah? But like I said, is it all women who have a big dog? No, not all women who have a big dog are having sex with that big dog. But chances are they are. Simple as that, okay? I, you, you gotta understand the dynamic. Mm -hmm. Because you see, these women who have these big dogs, they fundamentally are attracted to men, but they're afraid of them. Mm -hmm. Because men, of course, being sentient human beings, are, are not easily controlled. I mean, they're controllable, but they're not always controllable. Huh? And so women, those women who are attracted to men, yet scared of them because of this. Well, the big dog is the perfect substitute. The perfect substitute for a man because the big dog overwhelms her physically, and yet at the same time is easy to control, unlike a man. And notice too, see, the women will get a male dog. Hmm? I mean, when I was thinking about getting a dog, I was told consistently by a lot of people that I should get a female dog, because female dogs are a lot easier. Because male dogs tend to chew up all your furniture, and they're harder to teach, and all kinds of stuff, because they have more testosterone. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's simplistic, but basically, yeah? And so I was told, you know, get a female dog. A female dog is just going to be a lot easier, a lot easier to train, it's not going to chew up everything, or at least we'll know that only certain toys can be chewed, that kind of thing, okay? So fine, you know? But later on, I realized that women get these male dogs because they don't mind the male dog chewing up everything. No, because they're looking at the dog, at the male dog, at the dog in general, for a, a completely different reason, huh? Yeah. Oh God, yeah. I was messing with some girl on Twitter, yeah? I'm not gonna say who it was or, or my identity because I, I go under a pseudonym online, right? But um, I was messing with this girl on Twitter, right? And she had posted pictures of herself and her very big dog. Uh, oh, what the hell is that? I mean, it was so obvious, okay? I mean, she lavished love on that dog. She had a bunch of pictures of herself and the dog, but her and the boyfriend, oh, very few. And she didn't have a problem showing the face of the boyfriend, right? But she just didn't care that much about the boyfriend, or certainly didn't care as much for the boyfriend as she did for the dog. The dog, the dog, the dog was her mate. Yeah, that's what's going on. And it's really fucking funny, but it's also sad. Yeah, because these women, they feel lonely, huh? And they're not able to interact in a normal way with human beings, huh? I'm talking about both the, the, the ones who have the purse puppies and the one who, who have, you know, the dog as sex object kind of people, right? These women, they are afraid of dealing with human beings and, and the messiness of human beings and the fact that human beings have agency or at least have a stronger agency than dogs do. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of that agency of the child, of the man, and so they substitute the child that they desire, that they hunger for, they substitute that for a chihuahua. And the man that they want in their lives, the man who will not merely overwhelm them physically, but also protect them, make them feel safe and secure, well, they, they give up on that dream and swap it out for a Saint Bernard. And this is fundamentally sad, okay? But it's important to understand what's going on here. See, these dog moms, mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, they're funny, but it's also sad. It's very human. And what's important to understand is the motivation of these people. See, they're, they're not bad people or necessarily perverse people. They slip into perversions, I would say. Mm -hmm. But it's of a human need, a human need for company, for other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the whole reason that I got my dog. Yeah? I was working all the time and working as a writer, what was I doing? I was just there alone. It's a very lonely occupation. And in fact, it was my literary agent who suggested that I get a dog. Yeah, she in fact went with me to get the dog. Yeah, and with a dog, well, the dog made me feel less lonely because that was the problem I was having. I felt so unbelievably alone. Huh? But with a dog, that eased that sense of loneliness. And you know, 
three, four, five times a day, I'd have to go out with her for at least a half hour. So she'd do her business and get some air and walk around and it was good for the dog and also good for me. See? I mean, pets, I'm not against pets. I'm not anti-dog. I'm just saying you should know why somebody has a pet and what they are doing with that pet behind closed doors. <laughs>